Thank you, Sorochi. Thank you. It's been so long that we have waited for this moment. And that is Manawa to return in his former glory. It was once stated by Sorochi that he will bloom before the series ends. He has reached to the final arc, and I wonder if it's one of the plot points that he may have forgotten or trolled about it. A long time ago, Mondawa was going places and it was all well until he got dragged in like a slave dog. The last chapter had him to step up and finally take his stand. This chapter not only lived up to Sorochi's promise, but Mondawa has finally bloomed and it was all worth the wait. In the last chapter, I said that he has bloom. However, it was only the beginning of that effect. This chapter is the true effect with perfectly time of execution. I thought he wouldn't have much of a glory moment since it was at the end and he already served in the beginning of the arc. Once again, Sorochi surprised me with his brilliant use of his character and long term build that compiled all the hardships and developments he underwent into one refined man. There is one small scene with Earth and that's done to prepare us for the next chapter to fully focus on. It sets up for a possible explosive event with Sadaharu going ahead to pay the sacrifice, leaving Yorozuya to take care of him. It pretty much prepared for a long rated reunion and it should be a really sweet one. Anything could happen from that point forward, but that excitement will be saved for next time because we have a man that is evolving to focus on. It's purely a Madao chapter, and rightfully so. I thought it was pretty heartwarming to begin with a flashback before he wears his old uniform. It took place around chapter 596 because that's when he returns as Hasegawa, the chief of the Bureau of Immigration, and it fits very well. There are some deep meaningful words he told his wife about his life, like what if life would have deferred if he had his job during the invasion? On one hand, he felt that the war could have been prevented by him since he takes care of these criteria. On the other hand, he thought not only it would have been inevitable, but his view would be as courageous and matured if he still had the job. It displayed that his life as a homeless actually helped him to learn and adapt the hardship of misery yet it gave him strength and love. He was a bit of a prick when he was working, but now he gains so much. I thought it was effective to show the wife once and it was when she was apologetic to him for not able to support him for his clear attempt to serve the war. Everything else is just something you can fill in from Maldo's response. The point is it was a moment of sincerity that his wife continues to show for him no matter how low he sunk. I hope they are reunited by the end of the series. I love how it ended with Madawa to not only reassure her that he will be fine but he will return once the war is over. To see Madawa in the center stage in command is a pleasant yet great rewarding sight by Sorochi. It's not what I imagine when it comes to his shiny moment, but he once again topped my expectation because it fits perfectly well to his character, especially by the end. The idea is not to destroy the ship, but to slow it down before making a contact to Earth. It's crazy, but it just might work. I love how there's that clear cut development from Prince Hata. Not only has he told Shitaku, his brother, to believe in his decision, but the fact he actually believed in someone, that's a big step up to his character. It feels rather surreal to see him with this development as well as trusting the very same person who knocked him away the first time. It was only the beginning for Madao's shiny moment. The debate between Madao and Shijaku is pretty compelling and meaningful. Shijaku wasn't wrong to against the idea because he was right that the amount of ships they had using anti-impact shields wouldn't hold up. Even Maldao didn't deny that blowing up the ship is the best option. The problem is that it only solves the problem to save Earth but not people in that ship. Not only it still ends lives but it go against what Maldao believes in. Equality. He believes that Earth will stop autonomous energy by the time they are done slowing down the ship. It also makes room for people inside to flee as well as allows the ships to self-destruct before entering Earth. It is a great idea, but the problem is that the amount of ship 
well able to stop it and it does show if it was that simple this option would have been perfect it's effective to show the struggle and possibility of plan goes wrong because it not only reinforced Shijaku's idea, but it shows risk and struggle that wasn't going to be that easy. It feels more genuine for something like that to be a challenge. It doesn't take away Madao and his approach whatsoever. It only shows how much he truly cares about everyone. And if it's risky, so be it. As long as he can save everyone, he will do whatever it takes. He makes a strong argument that Shijaku couldn't really respond back because it only makes him look selfish. Why has one to die when there is a way to save all? Sakamoto and Kazuna wake up on time for the approval and that's another point to Mandao's shiny moment. He got their acknowledgement and you couldn't ask greater than that. So I thought. The greatest moment is how it almost feel like Mandao's plan was about to go in vain. He needs much more anti-impact shields to make the plan work, but it could have been impossible if this was before all the recent developments. Thankfully, it finally pays off in the grand scheme because it has Liberation Army to join forces. I love the shot of every feed coming in like a horrible computer glitch in the system. Everyone has great praise to Earth as well as his plan. They also want to redeem themselves since they are dealing with Chief of the Bureau of Immigration. Which is amazing because he's really not. It's brilliant to wait this long for Madao to shine because not only this is based on his former job. But it fits well to his character as a whole. The timing of all the recent development made it very convincing on how everyone will work together. Welcome to Samurai Country is a simple yet highly effective line to complete the theme of the chapter. This is why I love this arc. Every piece lead to the next and this one is no exception. Everyone plays their role and everyone has their shine. Madao had to wait but it was extraordinary. It is gratifying to see everyone believe and praise Madao something he was missing for a long time. When Shijaku finally was amazed by Madao's plan, that makes everything complete. Everyone believes in Madao. This chapter is like over 10 years in the making for one character who has suffered and struggled for the majority of the series. Sorochi could have had him maintained as a Joe character and never get his shiny moment, but he exceeded it. He over delivered his promise and we loved it. Hasegawa is no special man. He's simply unemployed. I'm giving this chapter a 10. On friggin believable. I hope this makes it up for the last chapter. Then again, I am planning to remove the score. I love this chapter and I love the fact Bardao gets the shiny moment without resorting to a joke moment. He deserved this. He truly deserved this. What are your thoughts of this chapter? Do you love how it was delivered in this chapter? Do you love the fact he got this reception? What can you ask more? It's just wonderful. And that will do it for the review. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.